All right, everybody, I'm going to give you a little show and tell today on these VGA to CGA converters. And there's a lot of people who have issues with these when they pick them up because they're trying to convert their machine from a CGA monitor to a VGA because they either can't afford a replacement CGA or can't get it fixed or don't know anybody to fix it or it's above their ability or what have you. So they're converting their systems to a VGA monitor and they're using these to convert the CGA to a VGA. And that's fine if that's only your only option, I'm, you know, I'm cool with that. But the issue is that some of these don't have the updated firmware and it's really luck of the draw whether you get one that's updated or not because some of these are faked and it's hard to tell which ones are faked. You really can't because you can, the silk screen that they put on here that labels everything, you can make your own and it's really easy to bootleg these things. So it's hard to tell whether you get a real one or not. And it's luck of the draw 100%. If there's a way to tell the difference between a fake one and a real one, I don't know. But I have one that I believe is fake and I have one that I believe is real. Now the reason I say this is because they're both the same firmware level. If you look here, this says, if it'll focus here, October 14th. 2011 and it says GBS 8220 there we go GBS 8220 version 3.0 this one says GBS 8220 version 3.0 but this one's two years newer so it says April 18 2013 so there's a, a two-year gap between these two boards and the only difference visually is this one has vertical fins on the heat sink this one has little spires all around it but uh, they're both identical boards, layout and components and everything. Uh, you know, one VGA bypass and then two outputs and then the CGA input and the component input. Pardon me. So uh, they're both identical except uh, they're, this one's two years newer, this one's two years older. But per the silk screen, they both have the same firmware level, version 3.0. So I'm going to do a little show and tell here and show you how one works and one doesn't. Now I'm going to go ahead and tell you that the one that's... 2011 does not work and the one that's 2013 does but the whole thing here is that they both have the same firmware level so they both should work but they don't so one I believe is fake this one I believe is probably a fake one a reproduction and this one here is probably a real one because that it works but the issue is is the whole thing with the firmware if you get one of these boards and you plug it in and the screen freezes and things like that and it won't sync and you can't get it to work then you most likely either have a fake one or one that has been silk screened incorrectly, or you do not have the updated firmware. So you cannot go by what this says, because most of the time this is probably not true. So you just have to, fortunately these are only like 25 bucks, they're not like 100 or something. So you might have to buy one or two or three to find one that actually works, and that totally sucks. And I understand that, but that's just the way it is. So, And I'll show you what I mean here. Let me plug in, uh, for instance here, I've got everything set up where I have a 5 volt feed and then a video line coming from this adapter here. This adapter here is, is uh, tapping into the CGA and then it gives me five volts here on this connection without having to tap into any of the JAMA harness or anything. So it's kind of handy to have one of these. I got one of these this from Paradise Arcade. So um, let's plug in the one that I've told you does not work, this one here from 2011. And again, they both say GBS 8220 version 3.0. So you can't go by that though because the silk screen is probably not, not always accurate. So there's the CGA, here is the power, and here is VGA. I always plug the VGA into the outboard one, it doesn't really matter. And I'll say that it doesn't, you know, they, these things come with a connection for the standard CGA, which is here. And they also come with a connection for right here if you use, uh, if you use negative sync or something like that. For whatever game you're converting this is a, a more elaborate setup for separate sync negative positive and then and this one here is a composite of both so um well actually i believe it's a negative actually and this is you can use this for composite sync or negative or positive so this is a more elaborate setup but ultimately it doesn't matter which one of these you use because it's the firmware that's the issue not the connection so i have my cga monitor here then i have a vga monitor on top of it so let's turn this on and we'll see what happens here Yeah, there is the CGA, and the VGA will look for a signal when it finds it. There it is. Oh, unfortunately, it's a frozen screen. You can see the green saturation there deal there. And then you'll see that when this changes over to the actual game, the top screen's frozen. And you can hit the auto button here, and you can change the image to an updated image if it works. This will blink a 
few times and then it should update the image. It might take a little bit. It's not wanting to do it, but you can see the image is frozen clearly. The image is frozen. I'd like to get it to flash a different screen there. Maybe I can use a stagnant screen to make it work. It's flashing. Or I know what I can do. I'll just reset power to the deal here. Unplug that. Wait a few seconds, plug it back in. I should get a different image here, but it'll be, still be frozen. There it is. And you can see the bottom screen's working. So, yeah, it's frozen. So the, the reason behind that is that, turn this off, uh, any, pretty much any Midway game between 1991 and 97 uses a 53 hertz refresh rate. And most any other JAMA game ever made is a 60 hertz refresh rate. <clears throat> so being that, what that is, is the firmware does not know what to do with the 53 hertz. It sees it as 53 hertz, it knows it's supposed to be 60, so it doesn't know what to do and just freezes the image. So that's really what causes this whole problem, is because these boards, if I hooked another board into this, with, that's providing the frozen screen that was 60 hertz, like Tekken 2, I have a Tekken 2 board that I use for testing, it plays perfectly. No issues, because that's 60 hertz refresh, this one's 53. So that's why this issue happens. So you saw there, this one does not work. It just provides a frozen screen. I'm gonna have to use two hands to unscrew it. There we go. Now I will swap over to this other one that's labeled exactly the same as far as the firmware version. Okay, CGA, power, and VGA hooked up to the outside connection. Now this happens, of course, to Mortal Kombat, all the Mortal Kombat boards, and NBA Jam, and basically any Midway game between 91 and 97. So if you have this issue with any of those games, you're going to have to find yourself a, a board with the updated firmware, and like I say, it's luck of the draw whether you get one. So we saw that this one froze, uh, froze the screen, doesn't work. This one here with an identically labeled firmware version. Let's see what happens with it. Okay, there's the CGA. Oh, this is loose on here. There we go. Hey, there you go. It looks washed out and bad because I these are all default settings for brightness and contrast and clamp and settings. All that, all that stuff is default, so it looks like junk. But, but there you go. You can see that it's working. No frozen screen. Welcome to So there's an example of what I'm talking about. You got two boards, identical labels for firmware version, even though they are not clearly. So, like I say, you just have to find one and get yourself one, and hopefully it works. If it doesn't, you have to get another one. I just it sucks that I have to say that, and it sucks you have to do that. But if you buy one and, and it provides a frozen screen, you're gonna have to buy another one, and hopefully that one will work. There's really nothing else I can say that can illustrate this issue. So uh, if you have any questions or anything, let me know, and otherwise, hopefully this helped you out. If you had any questions on why your board's freezing or why it doesn't work with your converter, you've got a board with outdated firmware, and hopefully I showed it accurately enough so you can understand what I'm talking about and what I mean, and hopefully it helped you out. Let me know if you have any issues. Thanks.